Good morning, everybody. Good morning on a beautiful, beautiful June morning here in New York. And um, it's probably all different kinds of weather and all different places that you that you are. Um, it sort of reminds me of how we are emotionally, that we can be one way emotionally and it feels like that's the way the world is. And, and then uh, when we're in connection with many, many other people, and they're all in different weather systems emotionally. And that can be surprising, you know, like uh, with the corona uh, virus, some people were feeling devastated or in some moments, everybody was feeling devastated, almost everybody. But then in, in other moments, people, wow, this is, this is great. I get to stay home. So there are all different, different emotional weather systems as well. So welcome, welcome. This is our time during the week to, to get together, to support each other, to reflect together and uh, to see how focusing can help us, uh, especially those of us who um, are holding a lot for other people as well as for ourselves, how focusing can help us in these times. So Isabel, you have a welcome for us. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Again, what a beautiful way to start the week. Uh, just one technical thing again. I know if you've been coming every week, you know this, but just a reminder, if you are going to leave, leave before we break for um, the breakout rooms. And just to put in the room that, you know, that's an act of generosity when you stay to be able to be there to support someone in their speaking and to hold them. And so it's a little bit about giving, also receiving, and just wanted to invite you to really check in as to why you leave uh, when that happens. Um, and thank you for being here today. I, I am very appreciative of this space and the community that has been created. Yes, right. Isabel, I love the breakout rooms uh, to get to be surprised at the encounter with three other people and you don't know who they'll be and, <laughs> and you don't know what's going to happen. Of course, we never know what's going to happen. Jean reminds us we don't ever even know the next thing we're going to say, uh, which if you're giving a talk can be a little anxiety provoking until you sort of get to trust that. And, it, and uh, Melinda, you have a welcome for us? Yeah. Um, well, I'll just say that, Lynn, when you talked about the weather this morning, um, I really right away, I knew that was a metaphor for what's happening inside of me today. And uh, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I am on the sort of the front lines right now trying to support everybody. And sometimes I do um, lose myself. And so inside, I'm just feeling a little unsettled so I'm really glad to be here today because I can come as I am and mm -hmm. even though we're all on the front lines doing what we can to support people we can also make space for what is going on inside of us um, and yeah. just to mention that um, our new platforming for those who are new is coronaplaza.life and we are offering series of web webinars and tools to support folks during this time and you're welcome to take as well as to um, facilitate so again, welcome everyone. And I'm glad to be able to collaborate with Lynn and the team on this project. I just want to underline that, Melinda, that uh, they're wonderful, wonderful workshops. Uh, many of the people that I've, uh, that I've told about it are so happy to have these free workshops. And, uh, but it's also a wonderful opportunity to, to give something that uh, to offer something that you are passionate about um, and to try out your skills. If you're new at facilitating or leading, it's a wonderful you know, opportunity to, to grow in that way. 
Um, and, I, and I'll just say one thing, Lynn, is that we will provide all the technical and behind the scenes support so that you just need to do the facilitating. We'll be happy to support you otherwise. What a, what a wonderful opportunity. Wow, it's a fabulous opportunity. So um, I also want to, to welcome Charlotte, who will be doing our attunements. And uh, Charlotte is uh, starting a new um, certifying uh, FOT program in September that isn't only for therapists, but for all, you know, focusing trainers and, and helpers. And it's a wonderful, wonderful program. We'll, we'll put the information in the chat. Do you want to say hi to people, Charlotte? Yeah, hi there. Hi. Um, and it's so lovely seeing so many people that I know and haven't, some people I haven't seen for a really long time and, and also very exciting to see new people here. So uh, thank you for having me, Lynn, and thank you guys for having me today. It's such a pleasure, Charlotte. It's uh, Charlotte and I have worked together for years and I'm always so pleased to have Charlotte um, speaking and, and giving her wonderful spirit to things. So um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about inspiration today. And it's something we really, really need these days, right? A friend of mine gets up every morning and, and searches through the news and the papers, the papers, of course, that are online, uh, looking for something inspiring because she can't stand to read the other stuff until she finds something inspiring to sort of hold her. And uh, I'm thinking that, that many of us, uh, maybe not as consciously, are in need and searching for something inspiring, something that can hold us, that can motivate us. So, so I asked Siri, you know, what is the definition of inspiring? Siri is very cooperative. She always tells me what she knows. And she said, <laughs> June is laughing here. <laughs> she, Siri said that uh, to, to inspire is to, to fill someone uh, with the desire and the ability to be creative to animate somebody. And, uh, and the next definition is to inhale, to breathe in. And uh, my friend that was visiting me yesterday, um, she said, oh, those are too many words. You shouldn't give that definition. People will get lost in all those words. And I thought, well, what's, what's a, a, a more direct way of saying what inspiring is. And I thought, well, to be inspired is to be touched. It's to be touched, but also to but be also touched when it's something, oh, okay. To be touched, but, but also to have something brought out in me, something evoked. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, how does focusing help us to be inspired? And since I am uh, somebody that loves things in threes, three points, and um, I grew up going to church where the, the, the minister always had three points, so I'm going to give you three points. They're pretty arbitrary, isn't it? You could put anything and cut the pie and um, I'm cutting it in three. So the, the first way that focusing can help us to be inspired is that the philosophy and the practice of focusing is incredibly inspiring to many of us. I think of, when I think of the philosophy of focusing, I think of, of, of the words of, of Jean Genlin that I quote 
often when I'm teaching and that I have with me all the time as a therapist. Uh, and, and those words are that every human experience has a forward or a furthering movement inherent in it. Every human experience. And that's just so inspiring to me. It's like, oh, wow. It's like when I remember that, it does something inside of me. It, it soothes something. It enlivens something. I love that in, the, in that uh, series definition, the word animate. Animate such a great word. For those of you for whom English isn't uh, your first language, uh, the word animate is to, is to bring you alive, to fill you with life. And uh, inhale is about bringing in life. So those words of, of genes animate me. The, the, also, the practice of focusing is so inspiring because if we're the focuser or we're the listener, the helper, we're experiencing moment by moment this life, this life forward energy, that something can be so depleting, demoralizing, scary, um, horrible, overwhelming, and just focusing on it in the moment and having a word or a name for it brings this furthering. And uh, all of you who do focusing or no focusing know how inspiring it is to either have that uh, experience oneself or to be part of it with someone else. You know, I can't believe as a therapist that I'm, I'm paid to, to have this experience with people of these moments of this furthering, no matter what it is that, that we're struggling with. So focusing is uh, the practice and the philosophy is inspiring in and of itself. The second point is that focusing, the, the focusing pause, that revolutionary pause that we talked about um, last week enables us, gets us ready to be receptive to something touching us. You know, if being inspired is being touched, it's that pause, that breathing something in that uh, opens us to being inspired that many, many inspiring things or experiences or people can sort of just go right by me. I won't even be noticing. Uh, I won't notice the sky. Wow, the sky, look at that sky. I won't even notice it unless I've had that pause. I pause and I say, oh wow, look at that sky. My goodness. So that, that pause opens us to taking in, to breathing in what can be inspiring, uh, to remember it, to savor it. Uh, I had uh, a guest yesterday for the first time in three months. Um, her name is Kathy and she was um, Swimming, or she loved swimming. She was swimming around the, the pond in this icy cold weather. I was sitting happily on my bench, all dry and warm, and she was squealing with delight. It's so cold, it's so cold. Oh, it's so good, it's so good, it's so cold. And she was swimming around the pond. And, and, and then I paused there for a moment because I was sitting on my bench, and I thought, isn't this great? Isn't this great? <laughs> She's so animated. She's so alive. 
in this cold. I would hate it. I can't stand cold water. I hate to be cold. That's why I'm dressed the way I am. Um, but to see her delight, especially in these very difficult times that she's had a really difficult time, uh, was quite, quite inspiring. But now the third point is that focusing doesn't only um, uh, make us receptive to taking in, to breathing in um, what can be inspiring, what can touch us. But focusing also enables us to interact with it. And we are, as, as Jean's philosophy um, talks about, we are this interaction. We aren't just the breathing in. You can't just breathe in and hold your breath. I mean, um, that's not going to be too inspiring. It's the breathing in and breathing out. It's this interaction with the person, the experience, um, the thing that's inspiring. And so as I, as I sat there on my bench, I thought, what is so delightful to me about her squealing? And that's the breathing out. It's the interchange with it. I'm taking it in, but then I'm dialoguing with it, which is what focusing is. I'm, I'm reflecting on it. And I thought, well, you know, I would hate that, being in this icy cold water. And it's so wonderful that something that I hate, someone else can be just loving. And I thought, well, why is that so inspiring? And I didn't get too much further than that. In the attunement, in Charlotte's attunement, I'm going to go a little further with that and say, what about that is so inspiring that somebody can just love and take to something that, that I hate? So maybe at the end I'll have an answer for, for, uh, for that. But it isn't really the answer, of course. It's the breathing out and breathing in. It's the interchange with that question. It's the furthering of the question. There's another point that I want to make about how focusing can help us be inspired. But I decided to wait until next week for that one. And that's that point, if you want to anticipate it for next week and think about it along with me, is how focusing can help us with, um, with people, with events, with experiences that are disturbing. How can focusing help what's disturbing to be inspiring rather than demoralizing or fearful? So we're gonna talk about that next week, but we're gonna stay with this week with the inspiring, um, our more usual idea of inspiring as this, this um, creativity that comes. It changes me when I'm inspired, but it, that change may not be something, um, something that definable. It's like something when I'm inspired, everything changes in subtle ways. It's a shift. It's a new relation with myself and the world. And it can, uh, as series definition, lead to creative action or thinking. But it may not be action oriented in the ordinary use of the word action. It may, be, it may be working in us and making us, um, making us inspiring. 
So focusing can help us to be inspired and inspiring in the way that it evokes that liveliness, that animation in us. And is this interaction with something that has life-giving breath to it? So there are probably things I forgot to tell you, but uh, maybe I'll put them in the notes if I, uh, if I did. And uh, this is a good moment to ask Charlotte to lead us in a, an attunement. And let's take just a couple of breaths and we can see how we want to interchange with this topic of inspiration and with any of the things that I've said about it. So Charlotte, you're on here. Thank you, Lynn. Um, just also taking in uh, your, your talk, it felt very um, evoking and inspiring. Um, yes, so I'm going to, to uh, lead an attunement and always with focusing, attunements uh, uh, can, can be wonderful if they're helpful. But if I go at a pace or it doesn't fit for you, just kind of go with your own process. So uh, just kind of hold my attunement lightly. So just turning your attention inwards, however you do that, whether it's shutting your eyes or looking down, whatever, whatever fits for you there. I'll do this with you. So just taking a breath. Maybe just noticing the weight of your body on the chair there. Noticing all that natural support. Maybe just noticing your hands and your feet. Maybe give them a little wiggle. And then maybe your arms and your legs. Maybe just noticing your breath there, letting that center you. And just allowing your awareness to come into your throat and your chest and your belly. Just coming into your core in its own way, its own time, its own way. And if that's hard, that's okay too. Just noticing what might be hard about that. It's all just about noticing. As you notice and breathe there, just checking what's the weather like inside. As you're settling there, just allowing something to arise here, some, someone, something that's inspired you, someone, something, or an experience that's inspired you. Just letting something come there, and there may be a whole chorus of things so just letting that kind of settle. Just letting one come to the fore there.
And with that someone or something, just noticing what's inspiring about it. What desire did it touch? What did it touch in you? What desire did it touch? What did it wake up in you? What did it evoke in you? Just noticing in your feeling quality, how did it impact or change you? How is that in your feeling sense, in your palpable body sense? Maybe just noticing the felt qualities there. And as you do so, just Seeing if maybe words or a phrase come from that place. And if something comes, just resonating that back with your feeling sense, is, there, is that just right? Maybe an image or a metaphor comes. A movement or a gesture. And anything that comes, just checking that back with your body. You always know if there's a fit because there's a little kind of, ah, oh, yes, that's how it is. And then just to see if maybe even a memory comes here. Doesn't have to make any sense, just seeing if something pops in here. And then just coming back to the room in your own time, there's no hurry. Just in your own way, in your own time. Maybe there are even like key words or something that came that you might want to just note down that feels right. Okay, thank you.